Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our show. Today we have our special guest, Charlie, and it's me and Owen, the host today. So I just want to just really appreciate the sun is shining today. Oh, really today I want to talk about movies, our top 10 favorite movies of all time. I'm a movie connoisseur, I'm sure Owen is, I'm of sure course. you love movies. We all yeah. love movies. Yeah. Over quarantine, just sitting inside. What else, what else is better to do than watch a movie, am I right? Nothing. Like, come on, nothing. There's, nothing. there's nothing like it. So let's just get right into it. So first, uh, Owen, I want to talk about Departed. Is that right. okay with you guys? Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'll just talk about Departed. Departed, in my opinion, it's got to be the greatest cast of all time. I mean, we have people. We have Leonardo DiCaprio. We got Mark Wahlberg. We have, every, we have Jack Nicholson. We got everyone you would ever want in a movie. And I don't know what the budget was on that movie, but it was incredible. <laughs> Everything, I mean, if, you, if you're a big mob guy, you'll love it. There's some action. There's some blood. There's some guns. Who great doesn't movie. like it? Everyone great loves movie. that kind of movie. Great am I right? Great movie. All right. For next up, Charlie, I want you to ask, I want to ask you about a movie that I have not personally seen, but I'm sure that you love it. It's called Whiplash. It's a great movie about a relationship between a drummer and a composer at one of the top musical colleges in America. And so the drummer in the movie needs a tough love from a composer like Fletcher because that's, that's how he's going get to um, that's how he's gonna get to his greatest potential. Wow. Yeah. And it yeah. seems throughout the movie like Fletcher's this mean, terrible guy who's doing all these cruel things to his people, but he really just wants the best for him. And in the right. end, He's, he's his greatest friend because he's the reason he becomes so great as a drummer. I mean, that's just touching. That's just touching. It really is. <laughs> it's a great film. All right. So for our next movie, I really want to talk about this maybe. I know, I know it's kind of low on the list, but personally, I probably watched the movie the most. It's Interstellar. Interstellar, probably Matthew McConaughey's greatest movie. It's got Anne Hathaway, too. And I just love it. I love the cast. And it's a nice, awesome <coughs> science fiction film. They go into space, and the ultimately the whole plot of the movie is that the world's ending, and this could ha we don't really know when this is gonna happen. That's why I love the movie. This could be happening in 20 years. We don't know when this is gonna happen, but it could happen at any time. The world mm -hmm. could be ending, mm -hmm. so any the crops time. are running short, anytime. and they have to go save the world. They have to go find somewhere where there's new life. So on this whole adventure, these whole adventure, these astronauts, these brave astronauts, and it really is incredible. I mean, Matt, Anne Hathaway was incredible, Matthew McConaughey was incredible, and it really just allows the audience to reflect upon our future. What are we gonna do in America? We have to save our world, we have right? To save so, oh, and I know that this next week coming up, it really touches you, you watch it a lot. It's Gladiator. Gladiator, yeah, I've seen it quite a few times. Uh, it tells a great story uh, of revenge from Maximus onto Commodus. You know, it has everything you want, swords, blood, guts, death. It's a great action film, but also, you know, Maximus, is, his family dies in the beginning, and it, he's so touched, and he's so angry, and he just, he just wants revenge so bad. It's a great emotional story. The action's incredible. Uh, there's a great dynamic between uh, Joaquin Phoenix, the villain, and Russell Crowe. This is really his breakout film. Uh, it's a great movie. Uh, the, the setting is incredible. The costumes are great. The set, uh, the CGI even is really good, like for the 2000s. Right, yeah. It's Personally, really one of my favorites, too. I love yeah, that. Great, great movie. Great movie. Great movie. Uh, yeah, it's overall just one of my favorite movies. Charlie, I want to thank you for coming. Thank you for the great description of Whiplash. You've You're been a great guest on the show. Awesome. Anytime. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. You. All right, for our next guest, we'd like to bring in none other. He's got incredible hair. He's a, <laughs> another junior at Coasset High School. I'd like to bring in one of my dearest friends, Matthew Finnegan. Yeah, so All right, so Matthew, thank you for coming on our show. Thank you for having me on your show, Colin. Awesome. So you want to talk about Inception? Honor to be here. Right, yes, of, course. of course. Uh, I know that you love the movie Inception. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, Inception is classic. Chris Nolan. Came out in uh, 2011 and follows uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's character. DiCaprio. Leonardo we DiCaprio. Him. We yeah. talked about him, The Departed. You can't go wrong with Leo, one of, of the course. best actors working today, of course. Yes. in my opinion. He leads a team that uh, tries to steal a piece of information out of uh, Killian Murphy, another great actor, yes. yeah. who plays this high up business executive whose father recently passed. So we follow Leo and a team that he recruits, which includes classics like Tom Hardy. Oh, come on. Yep. Can't go wrong with Tom Hardy. Yep. And uh, they go through, also, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, great yeah, actor. Yeah. Come on. Cast and uh, they go through a journey through the mind of uh, Killian Murphy, which goes through dreams. And it's just an overall excellent film, in my opinion. Awesome. Of course. And uh, even that film, the visual effects, they still oh, hold up today. Yeah, so like, good. So it's good. coming up on 10 years, I think. Yeah. Or Incredible. It might actually be 10 years. And uh, it's because they did it all in camera. Yeah. The majority of it, mm -hmm. they really didn't use much uh, CGI. Yeah. Wow. And that's like the reason why, even with uh, Interstellar, most of that was uh, with uh, miniatures and yeah. all that. That's why it still looks like so good and yeah, like, yeah, real yeah. and all that. Did uh, Colin? Did you see it? Uh, I have. I, I have seen yeah. Inception a couple times. Yeah. But it's just really. I, I don't know if I can grasp it. Yeah. Like, dude, it's such a yeah. typical movie to grasp. Yeah. It's a lot of different layers on it. Yeah. That's the thing about uh, the director, though, Christopher Nolan. All his movies are all that like it's like a cake. It's so complex right. and has so many layers to mm -hmm. it that you really need to watch them like at least three times. Right. Because even uh, his newest film, *A Tenant*, 
Really? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was really complex. Wow. And uh, I think uh, Inception, though, that's probably one of his best films. So now we're at this midway point. I would love to go over some honorable mentions. Oh, and you have one honorable mention. Of course, yes. Awesome. I have one honorable mention. Jaws 3D, wow. released in 1983. Uh, it's the classic Jaws film right, exactly. that everyone's seen. Third you know, part, right? yeah. Yeah. Yep. And it is one of the first movies that includes 3D. Uh, the visual effects are questionable at times. Right, but I mean, yeah. you got that, you That's the charm them. of the movie, though. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. 1983. What do they have yeah. to work with? I mean, it's, yeah. it's maybe not the, the best effects, but it's, it's really a groundbreaking film Come in on. terms of the special effects yeah. part, part, part of movies. So uh, I think it deserves a lot of credit. I think it, it, yeah. really, it really does implement 3D in such a lifelike matter. If exactly. Really, if I was in a theater, got the glass on yeah. my popcorn, uh, I'd, be, I'd be jumping away. Yeah, 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 you'd be jumping all around the place. Yeah, of course, right. Yeah. You call for shark. Right, of course. All right, so now we're past the midway point. We've gone for overall honorable mentions. Matthew, there's one film in particular that you love and is dear yes. to your heart, and it's Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction, classic. That was one of the films that really uh, put Quentin Tarantino, right. who's like known as like one of the best directors like on the scene. Like he uh, had his debut with uh, Reservoir Dogs about two years earlier, but that really didn't do too much. But when Pulp Fiction came out, that changed the whole landscape. Mm -hmm. of course. And it really changed uh, films in America, because at the time, they were going through a certain shift in the films that were coming out. But when Pulp Fiction came along, it changed it all for good. It also brought uh, John Travolta oh my God. back in uh, Hollywood, basically. Because yep. before that, he was basically a done actor. Mm -hmm. He really wasn't in anything for anything like worthwhile for the past like five years before that. But uh, when Pulp Fiction came around, in the he basically became like a figurehead of the 90s doing uh, films like uh, Face Off and tons of other films like that. Right. And uh, even on a story perspective, it's really like non-linear story, which uh, elements of that have been implemented by many directors before, such as uh, Sergio Leone, but uh, never on the stage or never on the uh, same level that uh, Quentin Tarantino did in uh, right. Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. And uh, even the cast as well, Samuel L. Jackson, yep. one of his first uh, major breakout roles. And now he's Yeah, he's works. one of the best uh, yeah. known actors of all time because he was in films uh, like uh, Martin Scorsese's Goodfellas, but he only played a minor part. But this film was really one of the first major Hollywood films to put him on such a uh, level that made him known. And I believe he did get an Oscar nomination for it. I think he did, yes. And uh, even the film itself, it was just a masterwork of uh, even the writing in it, which Quentin Tarantino did win an Oscar for. It's just such a complex and well-rounded film, you know? It's, right. ju it's just one of those movies, you know? Yes. There's always those movies that are just uh, known throughout for being the You'd best of the best. You'd have to appreciate it greatly. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's like known as the best of the best. Right. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Matthew. Uh, of course, for our next guest, I would like to bring in none other. He has incredible hair. He's one of our great teachers at Cohasset High School, and it's Mr. Sasso. <laughs> All right, Mr. Sasso, thank you for coming out today. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I was, I'm, I, was, uh, I know that you actually want to talk about Godfather today. Godfather is one of my favorite movies, yeah. Godfather 1 and 2. Right. Yeah. And so I was curious, what is your favorite, what's your favorite aspect? Is it the plot? Is it the acting? What do you like the most out of the film? It's, it's the characters. The, right. the story is great, but it's the characters. I mean, uh, Marlon Brando as Vito and, uh, you know, Sonny. Michael's a right. good character, too, but Sonny is a very fun character. Right, yeah. exactly. The oldest yeah. brother, Sonny, and, and Marlon Brando is just incredible. Incredible. And remind me, um, what's the name of the character? He's, uh, I would say he's, he's, a little bit, he's a little bit fat. He, he's uh, he's one of Sonny's friends. What what is his name? You, the enforcer, the tough yes, guy. Yes, yes. Luca Brasi. I yes. love Luca Brasi. Sleeps one of my favorite fishes. characters in the film. Luca sleeps, sleeps with, with the fishes. fishes. So in the in the movie, he's a good character, but in the the book, the movie doesn't do justice really? to the actual character from right. the book. Yeah. You know, the book is long, like most novels. You can't if you're going to make right. a, a movie of the whole book, it would be ten hours long. Mm -hmm. So they got to cut stuff. So he was dumbed down for the movie. He was still threatening, but in the book, he's 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 much more intimidating, and even. You know, uh, it, people ask questions, well, how come Luca wasn't higher up in the hierarchy of you know, right. the, the okay. Vito's family? It's because even Vito was a little bit scared of him. Right, of And uh, Sonny had that line in, in Godfather 1 when they couldn't find Luca. They said, you know, uh, if he turned on us, we're in real trouble. Right, and so out of, yeah. out of curiosity, soldier. did you read the book first or did you watch the movie first? I watched the movie when I was probably six years old, wow. my grandfather. Right. Uh, <laughs> Watched it with me, and he translated the Italian. He, he was a, he's a, he was Italian, and he translated the Italian okay. parts for me. So I wow. watched the movie dozens of times before I ever read the book. Huh. Right, um, and I know that the movie is, is a very long movie. I've watched a couple times, and I mean, I really do get tired towards the end of the plot. Do you ever like after watching a lot, 
Do you ever kind of dole out towards the end of the movie, or really, are you really attentive throughout the whole time? No, I think I'm pretty attentive the whole time. Yeah. In, in throughout the first one, yeah. The second one, there's there's parts where uh, kind of the courtroom scenes get a little a little right. stale for me. It's a little bit longer, and the uh, it's. I, I can't say if I like the first one or the second one better. I like the first one because it's the original. It's got Marlon Brando. I like the second one because it's got Robert De Niro playing young Vito mm -hmm. in Italy, which is like, uh, and in New York, which is my favorite part of uh, the second one. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So I'd like to move on to our next movie. This, I, mean, I watch this movie probably once a week. It's The Dark Knight. Now, The Dark Knight is the second movie in the Batman series. The first one was Batman Begins. Batman Begins is all right. It's fine. The villain's nothing special. It's nothing compared to Heath Ledger's Joker. Heath Ledger's Joker, in my opinion, legendary. It's the greatest performance in cinematic history. It really okay. is. I mean, rest in peace, Heath Ledger. I'm sure he would have produced a lot of other great movies in his future. But I mean, it really just incredible. It tells the story of Christian Bale's Batman, and it's his second Best movie Batman. series. And he's really he's faced a lot of controversy as Batman. People don't really know is he a felon, is he an outlaw, or is he a hero of Gotham City? People don't really know. And so we're faced, we're faced with well, the Joker coming in, and he's just going to wreak havoc. He's going to wreak havoc on this beautiful city of Gotham, one of the greatest cities in America in this movie. And he's going he's gonna to divide the people. He's going to make the people question the authority. He's going to make the people question, who are they listening to? Are they listening to the police officers, or they should listen to themselves? And it's really, it's an incredible movie. Heath Ledger's performance is like no other. And uh, yeah, that's why I love the movie so much. And about his performance, there's a ton of like little nuance, like the the how did I get these scars? He gives a different answer all three times. Right. Like there's just so it's so like the minutia and like just the little bits, it just make it so so amazing. And I know a lot of the scenes, Heath Ledger actually improvs a lot of the scenes, and that makes it so fluid and so yeah. natural. Like there's one scene where he's um he's looking for Harvey Dent up in um up in Bruce or up in Bruce Wayne's mansion or uh -huh. up in his apartment. And he's just, it, it, this was all improv, all natural. Oh, people. when he just grabs her? Right. This, and she has no idea what's going experience. on. This yeah, yeah. Not, this was not set up. This was really improv. Yeah. And so it just really shows to um, how fluid the film is and how natural it is. All right, so on for our next film, I know you want to talk about Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. I said this was my favorite movie for the, uh, when we had that assignment. But the Shawshank Redemption, it's such a great story. Uh, it goes over Andy. He was wrongfully imprisoned for the murder of his wife and her lover. And then he, there he meets... Morgan Freeman, and wow. I forget his character's name. Red. Red. And he, they, they form like this lifelong friendship in prison, and he goes through a lot there, uh, but eventually comes out on top. He escapes. He sets up the, uh, the warden for embezzling, and um, he goes home free. And when Red gets out, he goes home free. They meet on that beach in uh, Mexico. And it's just, it's just a beautiful story of yeah. hope, redemption, uh, triumphing over the odds. I, I love that movie so right. much. It's such a great movie. story. Agreed. So to finish off our list, we put it in the number one spot for a reason. It's your favorite movie, or debatably, it's Godfather 2. Godfather 2. And so I was curious. Uh, you said that you can't really decide. What makes Godfather 2 so incredible? Uh, like I uh, said before, the, my favorite part of Godfather 2 is the history of Vito, how he became right. into power. So first, starts off uh, you know, with a young Vito. Right, coming to America, how he got to America. I don't yeah. want to give too much away of the plot for people that haven't seen it, but as a little kid. And then, as a young man, it's Robert De Niro, and Robert De Niro does a fantastic job right. playing acting young Vito yeah. and spent months uh, learning uh, this specific Sicilian dialect to speak Italian uh, throughout the film. And uh, it, I love how it shows the rise of power for Vito, but it's cross-cutting the whole movie between Vito and Michael. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we go back in time, we see young Vito, then we see Michael present day, which is, was taking place in like the, the 50s, I believe. Uh, so it's kind of a father-son story. It's a father, how he came into power. We all know from the first one how great he was at being the Don. Right. Yeah. And everyone loved him and respected him. And then the real question at the end of that movie, the first one is, can Michael fill these enormous shoes that his father left right. behind? And in the end, it, I, I really don't think he can because really Vito... Vito had the three son, he has three sons and I think each son represents a part of Vito but mm -hmm. they don't all represent they don't all have everything that Vito had. Right. Yeah. So Vito had that very kind and sensitive side and that's what Fredo had. Fredo, yeah. He had that ruthless side that's what Sonny had and he had a very smart and uh, cunning uh, militaristic view of 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 uh, you know running the mafia and that's what Michael had. So Michael got that, but in the end, you know, Michael was more successful than Vito was. He had billions of dollars. He, he, he ran a great uh, family in terms of business, but his real family was gone at the end of the movie. Right, yeah. He dies alone, uh, mm -hmm. or he's alone at the end of two. Um, and in the first one, Vito was never alone. He was always surrounded by people that loved him and respected him. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's interesting to tell those two stories kind of side by side. Um, 
But my favorite scenes are the are the you know 1920s uh, yeah. New York with uh, with young Vito played by Robert De Niro for sure. Yeah, love those. And the plot is incredible. The cinematography. I mean, it's just really advanced filming for the time yeah. that it was created. It's it's like I'm watching a movie from today. It's incredible. I mean, although the effects aren't there, it's just the cutting, the close ups. It's all perfect. Everything the eyes, is, right? The black every, eyes. Everything is just perfect, so and everything is. Everything is is calculated in the movie, and it really yeah. is incredible. Well, Gord, Gordon Willis, the cinematographer, uh, won the Academy Award for cinematography for the first one. Uh, but when they were making it, uh, you know, they had to kind of hide what they were doing from the producers because you got this guy Marlon Brando, and Marlon Brando was towards the end of his career when he, d he did Godfather. He wasn't in the amount of movies he had been in previously, but he was a huge star. He's like on the level of nowadays right. Leonardo DiCaprio or Brad yeah. Pitt. Uh, everybody knew him, and he came back to do this movie. And you have someone like that in the movie, you, you typically light them up, yeah. a lot of light, show their face as much as possible, but they did this soft overhead lighting that came down and cast shadows over his right. face. But they only did that in the parts of the movie where he's talking about business and, and killing people. And then other parts of the movie where he's celebrating his family is brightly lit. So the cinematography represented you know, the characteristics of uh, The Godfather, which I thought was uh, really cool because it's not just about what the characters are saying, right? It's like how can you watch a movie and, and you know not even listen to the dialogue and still get a feel for what the characters are and, and you know how they interact and who they are in a movie like that? You definitely can. Right. Awesome. Well, I'd like to thank all guests for joining us. Ms. Sasso, you've been incredible. Charles is incredible. Matthew is incredible. If I could, uh, Colin, for one second, yeah. since we talked about Luca Brazzi earlier, yep. I should probably tell you the story of my, my son because his name is Luca too. Right. Go yeah. Yep. So I mean, uh, you might. I think I've heard I've this. Told yeah. Yeah. This story before. So when my wife was pregnant with uh, my son Luca. We didn't know what we were going to name him, and we were going through names, and uh, my wife said, just give me a list of names that you like. So I gave her a list, and on the list was Santino, <laughs> Michael, Luca, yeah. uh, Vito, Carlo, a bunch of names from The Godfather. She didn't know they were all from The Godfather. I didn't put Fredo on there, <laughs> because that would be some kind of form of uh, abuse or something to name yeah. <laughs> after Fredo Corleone. Uh, but my wife didn't know that, and then she picked Luca. Mm -hmm. I said, and, and that was one of my favorites too. So Luca's born, have Luca, and then I tell her the story later of where the list came from. Yeah. It was just a list of names from my favorite movie, The Godfather. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it just shows it just shows the impact that these movies can have. It's not right. just it's not just a movie to you. It's it's just a life. It's, it's really impacts your life. I'm sure Absolutely. it's impacted the lives of people all across the globe. Mm -hmm. So I just like to thank you. We've gone on some excellent films. I'd highly review watching all of them if you can. They really just sit down for one day. You could binge watch all of them. They're incredible. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for coming out. Thank you all. You've been great hosts. Thank, thank you, Colin. Sasso. Thanks for all the guests. And uh, thank you. See you next time. Thank you. See you later. Great. Great job, guys. That's pretty good. Fantastic. It was like some I should have like went over the plot more. I was just like, kind of like saying what I liked about it. And it was yeah, like, yeah.